Buenas tardes y bienvenidos a todos. I am Anna, a member of Latinos in Architecture, one of several committees in the American Institute of Architects Houston chapter. Today is the second in several short conversations in our spring series, where we will explore different professions. You might be starting to consider a career path or having to choose a track to focus on as you enter high school. These conversations are an opportunity for you to discover and learn. I hope you had a wonderful lunch and are ready to meet our second speaker for our LEA Spring Series, A Chat with a Professional. We invite you to type in your questions during the presentation and we will discuss them at the end, at the end of the presentation. These conversations will be recorded and posted to the AIA Houston YouTube channel. Today we have with us Asiel Nunez, architect and filmmaker. Asiel, we want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to chat with us and tell us about your career path as a Latino person. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I will start sharing uh, my screen to show you some of my work and also uh, who I am. Uh, please wait for me one second. Mm. Okay. Let me know, is it showing okay? Okay. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you again for the invitation. Uh, my name is Asiel Nunez. I am an architect from Lima, Peru, but uh, I also had, uh, I, I didn't live all the time in Lima, Peru. Uh, I had a short period, a period living in, in the USA when I was like uh, 13, 14, 15, when my mother was um, studying her master's degree. Uh, I lived there in Los Angeles, uh, and I studied the middle school there. Uh, and this uh, this talk remembers me a lot of uh, my time <laughs> there, uh, watching again all the projects and all my middle school, my my life uh, in the last years. No, uh, well, my name is oh, Asiel Nunez again. I'm an architect, but I also. Uh, like to present myself as a musician, visual artist, or filmmaker. As a kid uh, and teenager, I was always interested in the capacity that we have to imagine and create things, create things with our hands and experimenting with different techniques or materials. Through the years, uh, these interests have led me to be very closely related to music, visual arts, design, and culture in general. When it was my time to decide what to study and what I wanted to be, it was a very difficult decision. I think sometimes people take that decision to join uh, with almost no experience of anything. Uh, and some of you receive that pressure to you have to decide uh, a thing for the rest of your life. Uh, in my case, uh, at the beginning, I wanted to be an artist, then a musician or a sculptor. And in the other side, I also considered to study something related to social sciences. I think that's maybe influenced by my school, uh, but my school in the middle school in the USA and also my school here when, when I came back to, to Peru. Uh, but also at the time I start searching about careers and find that architecture could be a good option too. Uh, as a result, you can see it on the screen. Uh, oh, well, I am an architect. I work and, it, and at the intersection between architecture and communication with a special interest in narrative components of projects and new media. This is some of the things I do in my day-to-day -day life. Uh, this is some of the work I, was, uh, I am doing recently. I am exploring with different techniques, making digital and physical sculptures as a result of investigations of Peruvian landscape. Uh, studying architecture allowed me to connect many of my interests. It is a discipline that allows you to develop your own creative process that can be applied to obtain many results in different fields. This is some of my personal and recent work. I, uh, uh, a few months ago, uh, because of the pandemic, I started doing some uh, ceramics and sculptures uh, again. Uh, but I also had the opportunity to work with many architects in different films. So, uh, when I was uh, in my first year of, of architecture school, uh, in the summer of, I think, I don't remember the year, but I was like 18 or 19. I am here in these photos. 
this was my first job. Uh, I went to Santiago de Chile uh, to a huge company called uh, Hunter Douglas. Um, uh, in this summer, I was I really wanted to to work uh, in a big firm. I told my my parents that I wanted to to be an architect to work with a projects worldwide and i had the opportunity to well i, I only researched in the in the web page of this uh, big firm uh, hunter dialect and wrote to the ceos a mail that i wanted to to go there i didn't have any experience but <laughs> i i was with lots of uh, of eager to learn uh, my father always pushed me to pursue my dreams and that was an amazing experience i spent the three months of, of two summers. The first summer I went alone and the next summer, the next year, I went with a friend of my school when I was like 18 or 19 years old. Uh, these, these, uh, all these photos are parts of different buildings around the world. Uh, and I was part of the design team. Uh, I learned a lot on, on this experience. No? Uh, another important experience of, of me, uh, for me, was working with Longhi Architects. Uh, Luis Longhi, the principal of this office, was my professor 10 years ago in the school in, in Lima, Peru. And since then, I've been collaborating in many projects at this firm. These are some of, of the houses I work on with an amazing team. And also, uh, my favorite part, or the most important thing, is that I uh, could be part of all the construction and design process. Uh, I find out that architecture was not only uh, being sit, uh, sitting in an office, that I can also try with different materials and techniques and explore about, um, about how people will live in these projects. Mm -hmm. Also, after many, after gaining some experience, uh, I also, uh, apply many of these things uh, and these explorations in materials and techniques to my own work. This is some of my own explorations in, in my projects in houses. Uh, and this is some of my work as an independent architect. I could also apply these learnings to my own work. The most important part for me is all, always the experimentation with different techniques. You know? Most of them are uh, housing projects in collaboration with many friends and colleagues from Lima and also from, from other parts of the world. More recently, after studying my master's degree, I, uh, I started working on urban planning and urban design projects for various public and private entities uh, here in Peru. Uh, this allowed me to work outside my city and even start working in, in the interdisciplinary teams and win important competitions like this urban development in the Peruvian jungle. This opened me so many doors to other kinds of projects and a scale of projects and a lot of experience also uh, working with many people around the world. Nowadays it's so, so easy to, to be part of a, a really uh, interdisciplinary teams uh, working with uh, landscape, urbanism, uh, in architecture, design, uh, economies, geographers. It's really an amazing experience. Uh, at the beginning, I also told you that my interest is in the narrative components of projects. I think it's very important to find new ways to share and communicate. These are some of the publications of the projects I'll show you. And this is another example uh, of this other side of, of projects that I also do. This is my proposal for the Peruvian Pavilion at the Venice Biennial, uh, an installation that explores the temporal and urban dynamics related to festivals and cult uh, cultural events here in Peru. All of this is a little bit of the work that can be done by an architect, uh, the construction process, the design process, but also a really important part for me is the other the other side that opened me so many doors. You know? um, well, in the other side, this side works. I'm also a teacher at the School of Architecture here in Peru in the undergrad and the postgrad uh, programs. And I also had the opportunity to be invited to many 
uh, places around Peru, Latin America, and also uh, in other countries. Uh, teaching and being part of the academia is also a very important thing in my life. It opened me so many doors to me. Uh, in the last five years, I got the opportunity to teach in different universities, uh, always pushing my students to experiment, to be curious, and to aim to innovate in design. Every good design has to have a story to tell, a background, a guideline to follow. Thanks to Luis Longhi, I also had the opportunity to start a workshop outside the, the classrooms. Learning through experience and working in the real world, I think is the best way to learn. Uh, this was a, a series of workshops we do in these houses where we can uh, uh, experiment with materials and with the students from different parts of the world. We receive uh, many students from, from Colombia, Argentina, uh, Mexico, Spain, uh, also London. Uh, we receive a, a, a whole uh, classroom from, from London architects that were studying at that time in, at Barlet. Um, and this is also, I, I think, an excellent experience for me that I discovered during my career. When I decided to study architecture, I didn't know that uh, all of that we can do all of these things. You know? Nowadays, I consider video is my latest conquest. I feel that the versatility helps you to avoid getting bored in the profession. You can always try many things and combine your different interests interest into one. As a filmmaker, I carried out various projects that include interviews, short films, documentaries, and video installations. These projects have participated in art and architecture exhibitions and also allowed me to mix all my interests again, architecture, design, music, and video. This is a short clip from a music video in the house of Liz Longhi, the house that I showed you before that we are were working with the students. Uh, and in this part of uh, this is part of a, of a music video that I was part of. I will show you one minute of this. This was an amazing experience. It's uh, a short minute uh, from this video clip, but it was the first time that I could mix again all my interests, the filmmaking, uh, architecture, and music uh, with this band of some friends uh, here in Peru. Um, well, hope <laughs> I am not talking too much, but finally, uh, oh, here. finally, this is the project that I am more excited right now. This is a project I've been working for so long, like the last four or five years. It's called Archivo de Ideas Recibidas or Archive of Received Ideas. This is a research and documentary project that seeks to record and relate the ideas of people who thought their professional activity contribute to the development of contemporary and artistic and architectural thought. Uh, the idea uh, is to, to make uh, some conversations about architecture, architecture, design, and art. Um, this, project, we, we, this project began with a conversation in London. These were the first interviews I done in Europe, like uh, three or four years ago. Uh, this project started with a conversation in, in a London bar with Isaiah Block, the first one in the, in the left. 
uh, as an exchange of ideas that we decided to record on video, and that became the first archive of a project uh, that has taken me to uh, many cities such as Los Angeles, Houston, Mexico City, Madrid, Barcelona, Paris, Amsterdam, among others. These conversations uh, were followed by a series of meetings. Uh, I began to structure a series of, of topics to guide the conversation, and this way we were able to find some common ideas to all these uh, people that I'm showing you right now. Um, and I think this, uh, well, I, I right now making some of these interviews, these were like the first interviews I've done uh, back in Europe. Then I, I went back to Peru and I started making some interviews to architects, designers, and artists. Uh, and I start, uh, after many years of interviews, they, this took me like two years of interviews. You can find here, like, uh, I think in these uh, squares are around 80, but right now I have made more than 120, 150 uh, around the world, in Europe, in Mexico, in United States, uh, in Peru, Chile, uh, Ecuador, uh, and it's, this is an amazing experience. I always learn from many of these uh, people. Uh, last year, before the, the pandemic, I had the opportunity to go back to Los Angeles, where I live when I was a kid. Uh, and this time, I had the opportunity to, to be in the city with the, with the architects that are constructing, the, that are building the city. Uh, I was in UCLA, in USC, in Berkeley, uh, and also in Sire. And then uh, I went to Houston, to, to Rice, and to the University of Houston to make some of these interviews. Um, and right now I am uh, starting uh, making some conclusions about this work. These, um, the, the first ones are the uh, the Peruvians, the interviews to, that I made to Peruvians. Uh, these ones are foreigners from many other parts of the world. These are some people that uh, are more related to arts and design. Uh, and these are the architects. Uh, well, uh, I also like to, uh, to catalog them uh, from many other uh, variables, like age age and these are the younger ones uh, and this is uh, the first group of 80 interviews and this is some conclusions that i'm making right now this is like a networking of architects around the world but it's also uh, my trips around the world this is also my vacations and and my learnings from all around the world in the left you can find the the countries I've done the interviews in England, Spain, France, um, Netherlands, Ecuador, Peru, Chile, Peru again, uh, Italy, uh, Mexico, and United States. And you can also find uh, from left to right uh, how old are they. The, the older one uh, is like around 90 years old, the older people that I interview. The younger ones are around 30 years old, and all of the lines are the connections between them. Uh, if they um, present me uh, a new architect that I can interview, but also the connections uh, if they are family members of they have worked together. And it's amazing to see how this uh, uh, web is uh, constructing around the, the world. How I'm constructing this web around the world and also gave me many opportunities to, to start new works. No? <coughs> well, now, right now, you can find uh, Archivo Ideas in Instagram. This is some of the interviews I'm uh, publishing every week. This is, these are some clips uh, from one minute and quotes, and also in, in YouTube. These are some of the, all the, the full interviews, no? <coughs> uh, 
Well, finally, I want to show you uh, a short clip uh, that resumes all these interviews and hope you you like it and, and you, uh, well, hope you like it. Yeah. Thank you for this. Can you see this screen? Yes, we can. I will put some subtitles. I think many of these are in, or all of these are in Spanish. Um, all of the people that I selected for this short video are Latinos, but uh, many of them are uh, professors in Harvard, the GSD in Harvard, uh, Jail, Princeton, uh, Rice, UCLA, USC, CIARC, Berkeley, uh, well, and in other parts of the world. Also. Me interesa mucho la vida, me interesa mucho todas las cosas que los hombres hemos inventado para, para la vida, para realizarnos en ella, ¿no? para expresarnos a través de, de las cosas que hacemos. Y la arquitectura es eh, mi principal ocupación, pero no necesariamente la, ocupación, la única eh, ocupación que he tenido, porque... La arquitectura puede ser algunas veces un poco solitaria. Yo creo que soy inminentemente arquitecto, eh, pero más allá de, digamos, de, del oficio del arquitecto, me gusta pensar que soy un observador. Sí, me define bastante el hecho de ser arquitecto. Creo que, que le he dedicado mucha inteligencia, como mucha... CPU. Me acuerdo claramente cuarto o quinto ciclo, cuando realmente me di cuenta de lo que era la arquitectura, que era completamente algo distinto por la razón por la que había estado y cada vez me usaba más. Y me di cuenta que eso era lo que yo quería hacer. Y mi carrera fue una cuestión como de reafirmación de estar ahí. ¿no? Lo cuestioné todo el tiempo. Uno puede tener muchas intuiciones de lo que quiere ser, pero hasta que uno no entra a la profesión y se enfrenta a ella, ¿no? se enfrenta al proyecto, no sabe si es lo que le gustaba o si, o si era lo que era para uno, ¿no? Nunca pensé en ser arquitecta, en principio yo pensaba ser ingeniera, me contaba, de mi familia son todos ingenieros y yo soy súper matemática. Siempre también con el arte, bueno, mi mamá es artista y el arte para mí siempre fue algo súper importante, pero me encantaba el mundo ingenieril o objetivo, digamos, así que... Pero, pero mi papá tuvo una gran influencia en mí en ese sentido. Siempre lo acompañé, él es ingeniero, ingeniero pero constructor, y siempre lo acompañé mucho a la obra y era ese ingeniero constructor, como decimos, eh, arquitecto frustrado, ¿ya? <risa> Entonces, cuando al minuto yo dije, voy a ser el ingeniero, no, me dijo, ¿cómo vas a ser ingeniero? ¿Tienes que ser arquitecto? Bueno, dije, bueno, sí, puede ser una opción. Y ya, terminé estudiando arquitectura y la verdad es que me apasioné, me apasioné por esta carrera. Ser arquitecta y ser mujer eh, implica eh, un esfuerzo doble. Eh, con todo el tema de género que está sobre el tapete, vale la pena comentar que eh, permanentemente y desde que empecé a trabajar en mi carrera ha sido realmente mu muchísimo el esfuerzo que ha tomado que a uno como mujer la tomen en serio. En esta profesión no hay pues, separación entre horario oficina y horario de, 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 ¿no? de familiar, ¿no? que sea, todo está mezclado y, y entonces este, nosotros andamos viviendo así. ¿no? Desde ahí te abres, por lo menos a mí me sucede eso, desde ahí me abro. No es que solamente hable de, hable de arquitectura, eh, 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 en realidad quizás la arquitectura te da la capacidad de hablar y reflexionar de muchas cosas. Es a través de la disciplina en la que uno se siente cómodo y conoce donde puede obtener el mayor nivel de placer. Es el gozo intelectual que hablaba eh, este Jorge Wagensberg, por ejemplo, y que si fuéramos músicos lo obtendríamos solo leyendo una partitura muchas veces o oyendo este, este, unas sonatas de Bach. Eh, como arquitectos también podemos obtener ese placer con unas sonatas eh, de Bach, pero, pero lo obtenemos por nuestra complejidad eh, y nuestro conocimiento, eh, pues lo obtenemos con mayor facilidad que otros. 
en la arquitectura, en el juego de las luces y las sombras, en el juego intelectual que puede haber detrás eh, de un proceso que acaba pues, en el tempieto de Bramante. Eh, forma parte, digamos, de un proceso cultural. ¿Qué hace que un arquitecto chileno eh, sea tal o cual nos parece una conversación terriblemente improductiva. O sea, nos parece más interesante reflexionar en torno a afinidades que puedas compartir con alguien en Japón, en Los Ángeles, en Roma, en eh, Ciudad de México. Que la arquitectura no es estable, que la arquitectura es una, es una, es una práctica cultural que no es, una, no, es una, no es un servicio, que no es una profesión de servicio, que es una actividad cultural que define la sociedad, que nos define como humanos. Y para eso buscamos gente que sea muy extrema y gente que está sobre el límite. No todo el mundo piensa igual, porque para todos no todo el mundo es el mismo límite. O sea que los arquitectos deben estar en todas partes para que esto funcione. Si se quedan entre ellos, no. Ahora, los arquitectos nos quedamos entre nosotros porque el mundo nos humilla. Y es el único momento en que estamos en la comunidad de los humillados, nos sentimos bien cuando estamos entre arquitectos. ¿Entiendes? Well, I, I really like this uh, mix of, uh, of interviews and of, of opinions around the world. Uh, and it was really amazing to, to travel around the world and to meet many people like Hernán Díaz Alonso. Uh, he's an Argentinian architect, a Latino, uh, that studied in Argentina. Then he did his, his master's degree in Colombia. And right now he is the director and CEO of SciArt in Los Angeles. Uh, well, it's amazing to, to see many people, uh, many, well, in this case, architects around the, the world making excellent things. Uh, uh, well, and this is uh, an ex amazing experience for me. So thank you. I hope you, <laughs> you like it. And, no, we, we loved it. It was great. Thank you for this amazing presentation. Very rich and interesting presentation. So I really liked how you mentioned um, architecture as a versatile profession. Like no one t tells you um, when you're going to, to study architecture that you'll be able to merge to ceramics or merge to filmmaking or get, uh, you see it more, oh, okay, architecture equals math. So I need to be good at math. And um, like the artistic part is, is, is not that um, as, as expandable as you just show. So here's a question on the chat that is related to that. Um, Carlos is asking that for someone interested in experimenting with different materials or even different passions, how would you suggest someone start? Did you ask your teachers, um, your parents? Did you went on Google, like, what is architecture? Um, what can I do with architecture? Um, I don't know. Yes, uh, I think I am a very curious person. And I think that's the most important thing for me. Uh, to take risk, uh, to be dedicated, to be curious and passionate for all the things I do. Uh, I started first with uh, with music. I, I played the piano since I was five years old. But also in, in all the the way I I experience, I I can uh, uh, think when I started playing uh, with different materials or techniques. Uh, I think I didn't think a lot of, about that. I only take the risk and in the way I learn. Uh, I think that's the most important thing to be open, to learn uh, by doing the, the things. True. <coughs> so um, there's another question here in the chat. Linda is asking, when did you decide you wanted to be an architect? I was in your life. I think I wasn't very sure. Uh, I'm also right now I'm not very sure about that. Uh, I think that you can study, but that doesn't define you. Um, that is not the only thing that you uh, are going to do. Uh, I decided also like taking a risk. Uh, I like uh, making models, and during the career, I uh, I find out that there were many other options of what an architect can do, and. <coughs> And I think the most important thing for me is to learn uh, 
uh, a process that can be applied to many other fields. Uh, and by studying architecture, I can understand my own process to approach a different creative uh, project and mm -hmm. we, uh, take the risk to, to involve, uh, to make some films and to make also a book and to make some sculptures. And, and also when I'm doing or designing a house, I also like to take risks and to learn by doing these uh, things. Thank you. That's a really great answer. So um, I would also like to go through uh, your latest project, Archivo de Ideas Recibidas, or well, Archive of Linked Ideas, you might say. Um, I really like um, how you went and interviewed these very interesting and important people in the academia world for architecture. Um, so I was, I like, I like also that you mentioned that architecture is very uh, linked to storytelling. You need a good architecture needs to have a story. So as well, the architects should also have a story for themselves, right? So that's why you go and ask them the questions. So here in the chat, there's um, someone asking, okay, um, I saw that you asked the people that you interview, why architecture? So same question for you, why, why architecture? Well, in my interview, I, try not to ask uh, like the typical questions about architecture. The answers are like why they decided to study, uh, to study architecture, but I try to, to make like a, a, a familiar conversation with them. Uh, and that's, I think it's also an important thing that I didn't mention before, that when I started this project, it, was my, it were my vacations. I was traveling around the world and I wanted to, to take something from this trip and to communicate and to share all the learners that I had in this trip. And uh, many of, of the architects that were my professors here in Lima, I uh, asked them about uh, uh, other uh, famous architects or uh, around the world. And when I travel to each country, I have like a list of names that I, uh, I just text them by uh, Instagram, mail, and maybe I, I don't uh, ask them for an interview. I ask them for to know about their work, to be with them, to know their offices. And like the, the conclusion of that is the interview. Uh, but uh, the interview is not the whole project, no? Mm -hmm. But uh, well, why architecture? I think that, um, well, right now I am looking like backwards. I, I think the, the story changed every year, but I think I was very like inspired by many like, like buildings, <laughs> like, like famous buildings and towers. I, uh, right now by making this presentation, I was looking to some uh, photos when I uh, lived in the United States and I also, and also photos when I was a kid and all of my photos I are in buildings <laughs> like the buildings in the background that I uh, I have a photo of the construction when I was a, a teenager of the Walt Disney concert hall and I took a photo in the construction process what I don't wow. know what <laughs> I have a photo uh, and I have a photo uh, like in many buildings around the world I don't know if, if that's why I like it architecture or why I decided to study architecture, but I think it's a funny thing. thing. Oh, that's amazing. I love that you have <laughs> this time frame of pictures of the, like the construction process for the Walt Disney Hall. So what would you tell middle school students that you know now that you wish you knew back then? Uh... I don't know. I think uh, maybe uh, the, the things that I told you about me before, uh, take risk. Uh, every time you can, uh, take risks, uh, take some uh, to unknown things, uh, discover things while doing uh, them, uh, never be afraid of doing something or, 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 or to 
to take some mistakes. Uh, that's part of the learning. Uh, don't don't receive that pressure that you have to to decide to study or not to study. Uh, try to learn by doing also, and in the way you can always change. I think there there's. Mm, I think you always have time to to try many things, and the life is uh, very long to try and to still uh, well to make many things. And there's another question. Thank you. That was a great answer. Definitely take risks and also knock doors, right? As you did with all your um, interviewees. Uh, so there's another question here that says for the music video where you mixed your architecture passion and your music passion. What parts did you enjoy and what did you learn from it? Uh, that's an interesting question because for the, I started in, in the filmmaking industry because I was, uh, uh, I don't know how do you say it in English, but I was a, like a, an actor, but not uh, with, with lines. I was a, a person in some films that was crossing the street, the one that was uh, an extra. <laughs> like an extra, backup actor. A backup actor. And, <laughs> and in many, well, no, in many movies, and like in two or three movies, I, I was uh, working as a backup. Uh, and I was really uh, amazed of the realization and all the the cameras and all the lights and all the, the costumes and the things. And in those movies, I started as a, as a helping in every in every area I could. Uh, and after that, I decided to learn by my own, uh, to buy my own camera and to start making my own uh, my own projects. Uh, with that's is that was like also seven years ago, uh, more or less. Um, and I always had in, in, in mind that I wanted to mix the film with architecture. Uh, and I, I still uh, working on that. Uh, Archivo or Archive of Linked Ideas is a part of that, uh, making like a documentary. Uh, it's like a documentary series, uh, filming some uh, people uh, around architectural design and art, but also uh, I want to film uh, buildings and to make uh, fiction stories in those buildings. Uh, right now I am working or thinking of, uh, on that. And the music video was like my first experience of mixing the, the building with another kind of uh, activity that wasn't the, the architectural uh, more serious thing. Because when sometimes uh, it's also uh, I, a thing that I'm thinking about is sometimes architects are only, or many other professions, I think, are only doing things for the for architects. In my case, <laughs> architects making things for architects. Uh, that the only public is our architects, and I think mixing this with music and mixing this with other uh, disciplines. Uh, can open you many other doors and many other uh, public. That's true. In the end, I also feel that architecture is a social profession, so uh, it involves different uh, connections with other professionals, right? As you mentioned that you've also been working with um, geographers and, and uh, social studies for, for example, your urban work. Yeah. Yes, this was great. Thank you so much, Asiel, for this really nice presentation and showing us an array of possibilities that we can discover through architecture and design. And I like it a lot because you don't catalog yourself only as an architect, but also as an artist um, in general. So kudos to you and your work. Um, so um, please stay tuned for our next presentation. So thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you, Ciel.